because Michael Jackson was black, he wanted to take him down. And I think that was really such a terrible thing because it doesn't matter what color race you are, we're all people and we all live together. magazines that I think a lot of people don't know about, uh, and then that is, Michael received so many books um, and, and uh, magazines from all over the world, and a lot of the so-called Playboy magazines were magazines that he received from others, not that he went out and bought them. And so he had a huge library of all sorts of books, classical to children's books. I mean, he had a, a library that was bigger than a public library. And uh, in addition to 70 sheriffs who went out to get Michael, the amount of evidence we had in this case was bigger than any huge federal case you can even get. And for us, handling Michael's case was handling like 100 cases all at once. Documentary evidence, audio, video, and the live witnesses. We prepared for over 500 witnesses in that case. It was Incredible. really, really monumental. And that's what it took for the entire Santa Barbara County to go after Michael. And they only proved that they were wrong and they were outrageous in going after somebody as innocent as Michael. The one thing I have to say about Michael, and I'll end quickly, is that quite frankly, no question he was a big name and still is. Superstar, yes. Who's bigger than Michael? No question. Who's more talented and gifted than Michael? Probably nobody. But you know why he was so special? Aside from all that, underneath it all, he was so decent yeah. and so modest and humble. And a lot of celebrities you come across, they suffer from narcissism. They think they're entitled to everything. Well, there are a lot of people, not just celebrities, but people with money, fame, or perceived money and fame. It's unfortunate people are that way, but you know, I wouldn't be sitting here uh, and talking to you if Michael was a horrible person. Who cares if he was famous and big, if he was a jerk, not a nice person. But he really was a really, really nice, Thank decent you. person. Thank you. You're right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> he produced your first two records, set of people. What was it like working with Mike in the studio? It was an experience and a half. Um, one of the things that was interesting about recording Centipede was that um, I learned the song while I was on the set. And uh, periodically throughout recording it, I would forget the lyrics. He didn't care. He wanted the feeling and the attitude. And then, of course, another thing that was interesting is that right during that time was the time when they were planning the Thriller tour. And so as a result, there were all kind of promotional men, people that would come to the studio. So he was trying to produce me while that was taking place, and that was a big circus. But the one thing I remember that was really interesting about Centipede is when he um, put the song on, and he played it in what he called the biscuits, which were the large speakers. He said, now, if they burst, it's a hit. <laughs> but he said, if they don't, it's not a hit. So he cranked it up a little, and he started playing it. He got so into it. He jumped up on the council, the back of the council, and he started dancing crazy and screaming, and then, of course, they blew he up. knew it was a hit. Okay, Tito, what did you think when I Want You Back became your first hit? You've been on Steel Town uh, in Gary, Indiana. You had a couple records. And finally, you hit the big time. What did you think, especially because your mother and your sister, Reeve, didn't really like the record? Well, I like I Want You Back from day one. Uh, we had had uh, other records. Uh, I'm a big boy now with uh, Steel Town Records and Gary Indiana, but we had worked with uh, Motown. And uh, saying that, uh, they put together a brilliant first album for the brothers. With I Want You Back, kicking it off into ABC. But we knew it would be a hit. We were so excited. I had a little transistor radio. Uh, we were living in Hollywood at the time. And uh, I heard it come on the station. I've never forget the station, KGMJ. And uh, I ran down screaming, you know, it's on the radio, it's on the radio. So here's five brothers like this and screaming and excited because we knew uh, with our first record, Big Boy, Steel Town Records uh, was only so big. It was a local record company. And by being in the hands of Motown, we knew we now were international. And it was a success. 
and, and justifiably so. Great record. Okay, we're going to wrap it up. What is your fondest memory of Michael Jackson? And we'll start with you, Thomas. A couple of months before the trial, my only sibling, my sister, became ill with cancer. She had a brain tumor and a lung tumor. <clears throat> she had the brain tumor removed. It looked very successful. Uh, we were hopeful. She left the hospital. She came home. There was a bouquet of flowers bigger than a door. And she said to herself, where did this come from? And there was a little poem from Michael, wishing her well. Fantastic. Susan. For me, it was one week uh, before the verdict, and it was a few days before the closing argument. Michael looked at me and said, this is, you know, before, uh, you know, we, we even uh, found out uh, what the, 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 he was, he was going to be acquitted of all, all charges. He looked at me and said, Susie, he used to call me Susie all the time. You know, remember we're spending 10, 12 hours a day, five, you know, five months, five days a week. And uh, he, uh, he said, Susie, I just want to tell you how grateful I am to, uh, to God and to my family for having found you and Tom. That was the best thing I ever, that ever happened to me. I just want to thank you so much for everything you've done. So I'll never forget that. Thank you. You don't well, after uh, the case in Santa Barbara, uh, my brother uh, and I and my mom rode together in the same vehicle, and uh, we said, Tito, um, you know, after all these years, I've never done anything for you. I've never given you anything, and I have a present for you. I said, really, Michael? What is it? He said, I'll show you. So we pull up into Neverland, and uh, we get out of the car. He said, come on, come on, let me show you. <coughs> and he said, there it is. We walked to the garage, go, there it is. And then in the garage was two Bentleys. And I said, what, Michael? I didn't think you were meaning the cars. I said, what? He said, the Bentleys. Choose one. You can have any one you want. True story. And, and uh, I said, Michael, I don't want to take your car. He said, but I got two and I got five more. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, so I said, well, in that case, Maybe I should consider. <laughs> so, uh, anyhow, I said, well, Michael, they both are beautiful. I don't know which one to choose. I said, which one would you choose, Michael? He said, well, this is the one I drive all the time. And he said, but this one is a newer. And I said, well, I don't know what to choose, Michael. You choose it for me. He said, well, Tito, to be honest, I would take this one. You take this one, the one I drive, because everyone who rode in this vehicle have signed the ceiling. And on the ceiling was Beyonce, Magic Johnson, uh, Liza Minnelli. I'm sorry, David. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't have to mention that name. <laughs> but everyone that was a friend of his had rode in his vehicle. I have a vehicle now that I cherish, that my brother gave, gave me, and has all these beautiful signatures on the roof of the vehicle including his song, and that was my fantastic fantastic. memory. And this has been an emotional night, you've been yeah. crying, and you look so stunningly beautiful. Doesn't she, everybody? <laughs> There's so many. Um, I'm thinking in terms of uh, many years ago, Michael, whenever he engaged on a project, he always would give it the utmost attention. And I'm thinking about uh, this one time when he had this very special project and he kept it a secret, but it was for the entire family. And what he proceeded to do was to collect as many pictures as he could of the family growing up. And he put them all together in a collage and he had them framed, professionally done, and then he wrote inscriptions underneath them about what he expected in the future and how important family was. But what he did was open up a gallery and he put it in the house over the garage, very professionally done. And then he had the entire family to come over and he surprised us with us looking at that. And we saw ourselves from little tots all the way up to adults. And that was so precious to him. And it was such a beautiful gift. And I always think about that. That's fantastic. You know, people, people ask me, you know, what do you remember about Michael? And one of the things is his laugh. Because the Jacksons all laugh like this. <laughs> they do. They all have that That's, They all have that laugh. And it was infectious. And Michael used to love to play practical jokes. I remember one time I, I was 
go on to get some food because he was staying over at my house in Doheny. His brother Jack.